in the diamond section, um, always asking what the best diamond is, you know, and um, what do I use on my floor? What do I, I got? Soft concrete, hard concrete. What do I test for? How do I get to the point? What, what about removing material off the floor, like epoxy or glue or whatever? He's gonna give you some explanations on that and show you what the latest stuff is and how to, you know, maybe maybe get to a, the right diamond for you. So these are obviously the HTC. This is the Easy Wing design over here. Then on this one over here is uh, gonna be our Ready Lock design. Over the next uh, 18 months to two years, we're going to be moving more to the Easy Wing for a for mainly it's just that's a cost point. Plus, you got a, each set of diamonds from the Ready Lock to the Easy Wing are exceptionally well-made diamonds. They come in a good variety. We brought up in the, our, our last video about the smaller rental diamonds. You know, you start getting to the six series versus the 1400 series. Uh, these are the smaller segments. They're more common. You know, they're uh, a little less in cost, but you're not going to get the light. You look at diamonds here that are you know 13 to 15 millimeters thick and that's that really what sets us apart in the industry is the product offering and the thickness of the diamond so all your machines now are going to come with adapters to go with this with these diamonds with both, with both. so i you know no offense i don't like those diamonds i, don't use them. I never did i don't like it. these diamonds however are some of the best diamonds I've ever used, and right. it's all I use. And I tell people to change your scan master machines over, maybe, right. to those. You know, and the we do. scan masters got good diamonds too, no offense yeah. to them, but these are the ones I, I, you know, my favorite diamonds, okay? Gotta love the prep series diamonds. You know, these right here, I use all, I have all these diamonds. Yep. My favorite diamonds, right here. If I could actually get them off the wall. Some of might be glued on me. You pop some of them off. So I know how the, the big the big offering here is the variety. And I mentioned it in one of their earlier videos where scratch the floor, know the hardest, match the bond. That's where you're going to maximize your yep. production. Get real good at it too, because when it comes to all this, we want to make it as easy as it is for you guys in the field. The S means for soft concrete. The double extra 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 hard concrete concrete works like a cap cutter. The color is going to be your grit, the shape is going to be a bond. These are hard bond for soft concrete, medium bond for medium concrete, soft bond for hard concrete, extra soft, and uh, extra, extra soft. The big thing that we offer is the size of our, our segments. When you start looking at all these segments here, it's 14, 15 millimeters thick, thick. The industry standard is 10. People always, I get that question all the time, it's like, you know, Husqvarna stuff is expensive, but we understand we put a lot of research and development into putting a product out there that we're so proud of stand behind. But at the end of the day, you're actually getting more with our product. Plus, you get up here in the T-Rex line and the easy line, you know, you got 25, 40, 80, 150. This is my go-to diamond. It's got a little bit of a PCD built into it. Yeah, crushed PCD. And then yeah. that's what you use for, uh, what, zero to one mil? Zero to two mil. Zero to two mil. Zero to two mil. Yeah. Yeah. Really this. <laughs> yep. So, and when you start getting into, uh, I know some of you guys are going to be catched with this, it's going to happen. You're going to come across a job that's going to say, hey, I got a nature stone, or I got some sort of aggregate based top coat that's going to need to be removed. And it happens, floors fail. They're going to, they're going to, they want their floors, they want to be proud of what they look at, they want to look at the aesthetics. So you're going to have to come in and rip some of that material off. Absolutely. If you imagine that, you know, the 1,000 pounds, 700 pounds of head pressure push pushing those claws into a, an epoxy or urethane-based clothes or coating, or even, I mean, you look like your urethane cements or quartz coating. Absolutely. This is gonna shred it. Absolutely oh, yeah. rip them off. And we even offer this one here with a protective segment here so you're not- With no uh, wear bar. Yeah. If you this don't is, have a wear bar- We can get this with wear bar. These will literally tear your concrete to shreds. They and will. then you're gonna have to come back on it. We usually do anyway, like we have a, even a curing seal yep. on a floor. Sometimes we've got to knock this thing down to get into that concrete and then open right. once you open it up get into that but yeah you're gonna be tearing your floor up pretty good with this so make sure you know you, you have a yep. wear bar here so that's a great point for those you're gonna be running thin mill systems of any kind and um, if you're gonna put a t-rex PCD or any PCD for that matter on right. the floor you're gonna have to refine your scratches if you're not if you're putting a solid down oftentimes the solids to go and see the grinder pass when you're on flake systems, a lot of your flake systems out there will actually hide a lot of your scratching and your PCD because it's going to be a thicker system. Right. But for the thin mill guys, you need a you need a budget for a double pass. 
you know, one here, and then come down and clean your scratches up with the uh, 25s. Yeah, yep. I use these all the time. In fact, the, the Super Socks, is that what they're called? The, 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 this is just soft bond. Or I mean, I said, I said it wrong. This is a hard bond, soft floor, medium floor, hard floor, extra hard. If you kind of think about it, this is going to be all your brand new concrete. Right. Super, super hard concrete. If you go into a, you got a garage that's been sitting there, you got that, you know, 73 Camaro you've been working on for all those years and it's leaked all that oil on it, that's a soft spot. Right. And, you know, it, it, it's, uh, and I don't mean to pick on you Camaro fans, I know Mustangs leak just as much oil. So, uh, those are soft spots. If you're going to run a soft bond material on those softer floors, it's going to wear them out faster. Right. Ideally, we'd like to see you guys get 10,000 to 15,000 square feet out of your tooling. Yeah. And that's what comes down to using that Mohs hardness test and scratching the floor so you know it. Yeah. Use the other. test kit. <laughs> I, I think we're going to hit that broken record, but you know what? At the end of the day, if you're going to pay, spend four to five hundred dollars for a set of diamonds. Why not maximize your wear? Absolutely, absolutely. This is one of the most important things about prepping your floors you either get you know I've come across the floor where we've you know a hundred square feet burned a diamond out because we were going across and hit a, a really old patch that's right and all of a sudden we're at the plates yeah. then, what the hell you know I mean right you know so I mean that's it's scary but it's true and I use that example all the time yeah, and the last thing you do, you, you never scratch one spot. Right. I assure you this, you come to 9,000 square feet. One concrete truck didn't pour that entire thing. It didn't come from one batch. Right. It came from several batches. And all it takes is the, the guy at the mixing plant to sneeze, have to blow his nose, have to do something, spin around, do, and they get a little extra pour, a little less pour of a hardener or your Portland in it, and then you got a softer slab versus hard. You need to check several spots. Also, here's a, here's a good one that'll really screw your diamonds up. You patch the floor. You put down, uh, you know, a epoxy patch or polyurea patch. Now you're going into a soft or a hard right. or patch, and you're going into your soft concrete. That diamond is cleaning every time it goes into that other product. Right. And what happens? You're into a soft situation with a hard diamond, and or vice versa. You're going to tear that diamond up just right. as fast. Yeah. Even if you've been using it for a long time, I've done that. You know, and, and you always warn people about that, right? It, it, and you, know, you could be, you could be more correct. I mean, at the end of the day, the product knowledge is, is one of the three points I addressed earlier about make sure you maximize the production of your, your equipment. You need to know your floors. You need to know your equipment. You need to know your diamonds. And also, you need to know your RPMs. You have to understand what it means. Fast is not better. It just yeah. beats up the diamonds. Cranking it up is just running your machine hard. You're just flying the diamonds over the floor so fast. You're not giving the diamonds a chance to grind. If you're running these prep series and anything in that 25 on that potentiometer, there's no reason to be above a three or four. Yeah, the diamonds have to clean. They gotta go into the new stuff. They gotta go into the old stuff. Into the new stuff, they gotta open up these, they gotta take the you know they gotta take the coating off them because they burn and get coated with material. It's right. just like anything else. It, you run on hot. But do you ever recommend them putting them on some guys go, hey, what about uh, you know, what about running them on a, a brick or a block? Right. To clean them, you know, it's like whatever. And when you're doing those coated removal and you're doing those straight line passes, until you really get your first pass done, you need what's called a swing motion. You go out, you take a little bite of floor. You get your, your diamonds all gummed up, but come back to the floor where it's already clean. And then swing out, and you slowly swing into it nice and slow, taking four, five, six inches at a time, not bulldozing through a job. Right? These are not random machines, they're not bulldozers, they're grinders, they're treaters, but they're moving for it. Okay, what about using water? A uh, light spray of water on sometimes? You know, what we do is we get a pump up sprayer, and we mist it on there to cool the diamonds, or to uh, get, maybe get into the. Uh, water-based coating that was on there and start to loosen it up. Right. What do you recommend on that kind of thing? So if you're going to use water, a lot of people in the industry do. Um, if you're hooked to a vacuum, misting is all you really want. You don't want to make a slurry. Right. That slurry is going in. It's just wreck your vacuum. It will yep. absolutely wreck the filter. Now, as far as uh, the water is going to serve a couple purposes, the big one, it's going to cool your diamonds off. When your diamonds are cooled off, they're not going to glaze you. You're going to keep your production high and they're going to keep the floor. Right. But at the same time, they're going to clean the diamonds. Yes. It's going to help the, the machine cut more aggressively right. so you can get across the floor. 
if you're sitting there and you're holding the machine and it's running and you don't feel that torque of the machine pulling it out of your hands, it means your diamonds aren't running. Right, absolutely. Yep. I'd like to apologize for the sound of the landing uh, spaceship out here, but... <laughs> That's a shovel on the lever back there. Heavy equipment display area, and this all sounds like that, obviously. But uh, anyway, it's been great talking to you on all this stuff. Great information. This diamond, this diamond information is probably one of the key things that we have to go over. And it's always when I go and train on a, on a, a place I, or a new, new company, I cover this uh, extensively and I keep going over it because when we're going through there, it's so important to not spend that extra 350 to $400 on diamonds because they go way up. And, what would you have to say about the Chinese diamonds? I don't recommend those because you never know where they're being made. They can be extremely bad. They're cheap. That'll that'll bring it bring you to them. But what do you what do you talk about on the? On the so I, I see a lot of products in the market. A lot of this stuff is made in China, by the way. But we these are all made in our facilities okay. in Bulgaria. Bulgaria. They used so. to be in in. Um, Right. We did have some made in China. I mean, a lot of it was because of the metal backer. What we had to get was a, was available. They were made in Sweden for a while. Yeah, and they were made in Sweden as well. Um, with a lot of the and I, the generic term knockoff diamonds. Right. What you've seen a lot of. A lot of them have less diamonds actually in each individual segment, right? Which yeah. helps keeps their cost down. Yes. And, and less the metals are different; they're cheaper. The bonds are different in the metal. Plus, they're not as tall. They right. tend to be about okay. seven to eight. Yeah. Seven. These, these are 15 millimeters to you know 13 to 15 millimeters. Thick. A lot of the are the, the the generics that we see in the industry are about seven to eight millimeters thick. So you're actually getting about half. Right. So when they, you're getting less segment you're getting less diamonds per segment right uh, it just make sure you understand what you're getting and that, that was another point I was gonna make so when you're getting out there please guys make sure you get diamonds for your work you're gonna need a couple different sets right not one set not one. Sure. Sometimes, you know, and then you just, yeah, I can go on forever about Mediums that. Mediums don't do it all. So, lighter machines always, single seg? No, for, well, yes, lighter machines, but if you're going to do a single seg, remember, if it goes a single seg, you're going to make the machine cut more aggressively, but you're going to up your amp draw. So, you make sure you're running those lighter machines on like a 30 amp 120 volt circuit. Okay. Or even a 30 amp 230 volt or a 50 amp 230 volt single phase. You want to up your amp draw. It's going to up your amp so up your circuit. Circuit okay. When it goes to single set. So do you recommend the smaller machines like the uh, dirt, the, 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 the five and the five forty? Yep. Absolutely love those for. Because those the, aren't out here. Those aren't out here. The single yeah. sex. No, these are don't. obviously polishing the units here. So. Right. We don't have any of those out. Um, if you go to single seg, the big thing I'm going to tell you guys is that your wear life is going to be much different. You're going to look at a, at a tool that you're going to be four or five thousand square feet, um, and they're going to wear out a lot faster, especially if you're not matching the bond to the hardness of the floor. I've seen them go as long as you know, a thousand square feet before matching. And unfortunately, guys, when you're doing these two, the set of these should get you easily 22 car garages. Yeah. And if you think your cute. cost, you know, 450 bucks for a set of tooling. I mean, you're, they're going to pay themselves on the first job, so your your capital is going to be the next night. How many jobs. garages? How many garages? You should be 20 garages on one set. Did you hear that? 20 garages, not two, not three, not five. 20 garages. Okay, 20 so get garages. the get the right bond diamond. That, that's what you say a 500 square foot garage. When I say 10,000 square feet is where you should be. Yeah. I mean that's 20 garages. Crazy. Anyway, great talking to you about all this stuff, as usual. And um, he's actually my Michigan rep as well. And uh, I look forward to talking to him more in the future. And uh, if I have any questions, we'll certainly... Uh, is there any way we can contact or just call Husqvarna in general? And, or yep. how, what, how to get hold of you? Uh, so I, I cover all of West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. And but we have reps just like me all over the country. Okay. Uh, so on our website, HusqvarnaCP.com or HusqvarnaConstruction.com, uh, we have links on there where you can look at a map and figure out who your rep is for your state. Yep. So you can get information that way. Um, and you know we, we the diamond toolings are we all from all over. I mean, uh, we got distributors in every state. Um, you can get them at Target right now. Nineteen ninety five. All right, man. Great talking to you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, yeah. man. Take, take it easy. Okay, that's it. We're gonna go back and check out some more stuff. Walk around. Stay tuned. And uh, it was a great visit out here at World of Concrete. Get your butt out here next year. Check this stuff out because there's nowhere. 
better to educate yourself but out here at World of Concrete. For Resin Works, Jeff Lubser, live out here.